This very rare sequence of celestial alignments starts on August 16th. This actually goes all the way into the middle of October, so it's about a two-month time frame. What we have at the beginning here is the start of a new Venus cycle, Venus together with the Sun. And this is the uh, point where Venus is passing the Sun from behind. Venus is just about to emerge into the evening sky as the evening star. Of course, that takes a little bit of time. It won't actually emerge until about September 23rd, which interestingly is right about the same time that Saturn is moving out of view in the evening sky. So what we can see here is soon after the event of, of aligning Venus with the Sun, we have an alignment with Venus, Regulus, and the Sun. And this is August 22nd. Regulus is the brightest star in Leo. It's also known as the heart of the lion, or Cor Leonis. It's one of the brightest stars in the sky. And uh, every year the Sun lines up with Regulus on August 22nd. This year, Venus is very close. It's rare that Venus would be this close, both to the Sun and to Regulus. Venus, if it's anywhere in the vicinity, can be as much as about 9 degrees above or below the path of the Sun. In this case, it's very, very close. This entire sequence of events is highly prominent for Venus. In this sequence of events, Venus is actually highly emphasized, as we'll see here in just a minute, because as Venus comes up into the Virgo constellation, we see that Venus and Comet Elenine come not only very close, but they actually are conjunct, very tightly conjunct, on the exact day of the equinox, September 22nd. And this is significant not only because Venus rules Libra, but this comet was originally thought to have a uh, very long period orbit. And now some opinions suggest that this comet is a hyperbolic comet, meaning that the comet is a visitor from elsewhere, from another star system, that it doesn't actually orbit the sun. It's just being pulled in through the solar system by the gravity of the Sun, and it will continue on in its journey, uh, only passing through the solar system one time. This is pretty unique and unusual, because if it, if it is a hyperbolic comet, you would expect it would come in at any odd angle. It, it certainly wouldn't be expected to come in along the plane of the ecliptic, which is what's happening here. And then even more surprising and unique is the alignment, which is very exact, on September 22nd, from our perspective, the head of the comet and the planet Venus are exactly aligned. Another thing that emphasizes Venus in this whole sequence of events is that the Virgo constellation has been recognized and known for thousands of years by many cultures, not as we refer it today as the Virgin, but as the Goddess constellation. And we'll talk more about that in just a minute. Another thing that's very surprising about the precision of the alignment of the comet with Venus, right after it makes its alignment with Venus, only days later, on September 26th, the comet will move over and be positioned exactly between the Sun and Earth. And so the comet's tail at this point will be pointing directly towards the Earth. It is in some way as if this very unique object in this sequence of events is coming to convey an energy or a blessing first to Venus, and then to the Sun. Now, shortly after the Sun and the comet are finished with their alignment, which happens on September 26th, then shortly after that, about October 1st, Venus will move up and form an exact alignment between Saturn and Spica. Within the goddess constellation, Spica is the brightest star. And just like Regulus, this is another bright star, another bright star located close to the path of the uh, Sun. And so what we have here is Venus is actually making an intervention. It's, uh, again, Venus could be as much as uh, eight or nine degrees above or below the plane of the ecliptic. This time when Venus is coming through, it's uh, close to the plane of the ecliptic and 
therefore right in between the position of Spica and Saturn. Saturn has this uh, energy of uh, authority and structure um, and also is uh, resonant with our notion of time and so it very much has to do with the structure of our experience and also with the concept of karma which incidentally literally means action in Sanskrit. So this sequence of events is very interesting because first we have the alignment with Venus intervening between Saturn and Spica. Soon afterward we have the alignment of the Sun moving into the position. First Mercury will be in the middle of these planets and then finally the Sun. So what we can see when we take a look at the sequence of events uh, as a whole that what we have from the time that Venus and the Sun are together, Venus is emerging as Saturn is declining. And so this also then emphasizes the, the energy of, of Venus rising, meeting with the comet, and then aligning with Spica as Saturn is moving back behind the Sun. So we have uh, the energy of, of vitality, life, beauty, truth that is resonant with the uh, energy of Venus. And we have that being emphasized and focused for us. That is being, the energy of Venus is being uh, highlighted by the alignment with this comet. And then also the sun, which has to do with, uh, with radiance, realization, and enlightenment. And then the, both Venus first and then the sun come through and make their conjunction with Spica. Now the interesting thing about Spica is that for thousands of years this constellation not only has been known as the goddess but that brightest star in Spica has been recognized as the gift of the goddess. The uh, goddess constellation is usually depicted with the goddess holding a sheaf of wheat and Spica is in the position of being aligned with the head of the sheaf of wheat. So the gift of the goddess was known for centuries, for thousands of years, as agriculture. Our ability to uh, cultivate from the earth the food necessary to feed our families. But what this suggests to me now is that there is a turning, a shifting, in the uh, pattern of our experience, such that now there's a renewal of the vitality, a new life, a new radiance which is coming forth. And it seems to be a shift in the pattern of experience, the pattern of karma, the pattern of authority. One way it struck me more than a year ago was when this Saturn uh, spica alignment would occur, that this would be the mark and the beginning of a new strength, a new autonomy, a new authority for the energy of the goddess, for the energy of the mother. This also symbolizes to me that the energy of this sequence of events seems to symbolize for me the radiance of the goddess, the radiance of the gift of the goddess. And what is the true radiance of the goddess, of the mother? It seems to me that what the, the real gift is, and now we're in a position to begin to appreciate it. The real gift is not just the, uh, the means of our survival, the means of our being able to eke out a living, scratch out a living from the earth. This sequence of events seems to me to be a shift, the marking of a moment of a shift, where we move out of that sense of, of our relationship to our world and to our universe as one of, uh, of pure survival, of a shift towards a new life, a new radiance, a new thriving in our, within our experience. It marks a moment when our experience begins to shine in a, a new way, in a way that is informed not only by the, uh, the vitality and the uh, strength of our own lives. But it's about the thriving, the radiance, the ecstasy 
which is inherent in the presence and the togetherness, the, the interaction of all of life, all of life together. What this shift emphasizes is not only the thriving of small group of humans or even just the thriving of humanity. It's about the thriving of our world. And not only the thriving of our world, but that blooming, the seed that takes root in the blooming of our existence is the flowering of the entire celestial landscape. Our blooming is the blooming of heaven.